Thank you very much. Today, I want you to open your mind. Open your mind to the possibility that one day we will make contact with an intelligent civilization in outer space that could be thousands, millions of years ahead of us in technology. We are talking about satellites in orbit, the Kepler, the Corot, new efforts to identify Earth-like twins in outer space. We will have an existential shock looking at the night sky, realizing that here, 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 there are twins of the Earth. This is my next book, Physics of the Future, where I talk about the year 2100. Let me make a prediction, and that is sometime by mid-century, we might make contact with an intelligent civilization in outer space. Now, why do I say this? Because even as we speak, the Kepler satellite, the Kuros satellite, are identifying hundreds of exoplanets in outer space, 500 identified so far. The first Earth-like twins are now being identified. Perhaps they have liquid oceans. Perhaps they have organic chemicals. Perhaps they have amino acids. Perhaps they may even have life. This is one of the goals of scientists looking for signs of life in outer space. But then the question is, if we find microbial life in space, that is not very interesting. But the SETI project has gotten an infusion of funds. They can now analyze 1,000 times more stars than before. And the SETI project wants to eavesdrop on intelligent conversations in space. I'm a physicist. When we physicists look for alien civilizations, we don't look for little green men. We look for energy, energy consumption. We look for type one, type two, and type three civilizations. A type one civilization has the power of an entire planet. They control the weather. They mine the oceans. They control volcanoes. They control earthquakes. Buck Rogers, Flash Gordon, would be an example of a type one civilization, a planetary civilization in space. A type two civilization in space controls the output of a star. They play with stars. They are immortal. Nothing known to science can destroy a type two civilization. Ice ages can be modified. Meteors, comets can be deflected. Even the death of their sun is not a problem. They can either move their planet, reignite their star, or simply find a new star in space. This is a type two civilization. A typical example of a type two civilization comes from science fiction. The Federation of Planets, Star Trek, would be based on a typical type two civilization. And then we have type three. A type three civilization is galactic. They control the energy outputs of an entire star. For me, this is very interesting because a type three civilization would be able to control the Planck energy. The Planck energy is the energy at which space becomes unstable. Space begins to boil at the Planck energy. The Planck energy is a quadrillion times higher than the Large Hadron Collider. And gateways, perhaps, wormholes, doorways, portholes, perhaps to other dimensions, begin to open up for a type three civilization. So we have type one, which is planetary, type two, which is stellar, and type three, which is galactic. But one day, I was speaking in London, and a little boy comes up to me, 10 years of age. A little boy comes up to me and he says, Professor, you're wrong. There's type four. 
So I look down at this little boy, this pest, and I tell him, shut up, kid. Why don't you go play in traffic? There's a nice intersection over there. And he kept nagging me. And he says, Professor, you're wrong. There's type four. And I said, look, kid, we have planets, stars, and galaxies. That's it. There's nothing else. These are the only platforms for advanced civilizations. And the little boy kept saying, no, you're wrong. This type four, the power of the continuum. Now, for your Star Trek fans, you know that the power of the continuum is the cube. There is something beyond galactic, and that is dark energy. There is an energy source beyond the galaxy itself, making up 73% of the entire universe, dark energy. And then the question is, if we start to explore outer space and look for advanced civilizations, why don't they talk to us? Why don't they land here in Saudi Arabia and say, we come in peace? Well, my attitude is, if you walk down a country road and you see an anthill, do you go down to the ants and say, I bring you trinkets, I bring you bees, I give you nuclear energy, take me to your leader. Or maybe you step on a few of them. Maybe we're simply not that interesting. So let me now close on the following note. What lessons can we take from this? First of all, this has theological implications. Giordano Bruno was burned alive 400 years ago in 1600 for saying that there are civilizations in outer space. Because if so, the Catholic Church said, do they have a pope? How many popes are in outer space? A thousand? A million? A billion popes? How many saints are there in outer space? The mind boggles, thinking about billions of saints, billions of popes in outer space. Rather than think about billions of popes, they simply burn Giordano Bruno alive. What does it mean for us? What are we? Are we type one that control the power of a planet? Are we type two that control the power of a star? Are we type three that can control galaxies, alter the fabric of space and time? No, we are type zero. We get our energy from dead plants, oil and coal. But take out a calculator. How long will it take for us to become type one? The answer is a hundred years. Around the year 2100, we will become a type one civilization. And we see the beginnings of that now. What is the internet? The internet is a type one telephone system. We are privileged to be alive to see the birth of a type one telephone system. What is the European Union? The European Union is the beginning of a type one economy. Why are we here today? We are seeing the birth of a type one economy. What is football? Football is the beginning of a type one sports. Get on the internet. What are the most common languages on the internet? Number one is English. Number two is Mandarin. We are beginning to see the beginnings of a type one language. What is rock and roll? The beginning of a type one youth culture. What is Chanel and Gucci? The beginning of a type one high fashion. So let me tell you that we are now witnessing the greatest transition in the history of the human race. Transition from type zero to type one. The generation now alive is privileged to see the birth pangs of the birth of a new civilization, type one. Planetary, planetary energy, planetary economy, planetary environment. And so in conclusion now, let me wrap up. I'd like to dedicate my comments to Giordano Bruno, who 400 years ago, said there are planets in outer space. Every week, every week, we discover a new planet orbiting another star.